guys thanks for stopping by so today it's been a minute I thought we could do a houseplant tour of my family room so just coming in the back door this is a south door with a south window um, I've got my variegated schefflera which is so pretty look at the beautiful variegation on the leaves there I really love this one and next to that is my variegated monstera albo. And I don't know, I cut it way down to try to get some more variegation in it. It started growing back, but the new leaves really don't have much, much variegation in them, really, just slightly. Still pretty, I don't care. I'm probably not gonna cut it off anymore just cause I don't know. We'll see what happens if I just let it grow. Um, this one over here, this is the string of nickels or the Zerio something Danugi, Danugai, something like that. I really like this one a lot. I love round, thick leaves, and this one, this one definitely has that. And then next to that, here is the Burl Marks. Love this plant, it grows. It's one of my best growers, I would say. When I got it a couple years ago, it was just tiny. And I've taken a ton of cuttings off of it too, so it's really done well. And then up here I've got a Hoya um, Lacunosa. This is uh, one of the thicker types of Lacunosa. Um, kind of with the little waffly, I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, you can. See how it's kind of waffly? Um, this one's never flowered. I had a really hard time with it for a long while, but it's doing good now and I like it. And then next to that, this is my uh, Hoya Pachyclata, the Gemma variety. That one's doing good. Um, we've got, hopefully we'll get a flower this winter. I had a bud last year and it fell off, but, oh, can you, oh yeah, see that huge peduncle right there? And then we've got a little one on that uh, vine that shot out. Now, I wasn't aware with the Pachyclata that they did these long vines like this. So, um... Tell me your experience with this plant if you've had it. If it's done that, I worry that it's not getting enough light and that's why it's doing the vines on it. But I don't know, it is a Hoya, so maybe, maybe it does do that. <laughs> They're just such thick vines. I don't know, it looks weird to me, but let me know what you know. Um, this one here is the Hoya Viola love this one um it's got a big um, shoot coming out of there i've taken so many cuttings from this for plants and i love the new leaves that come in because they're really like kind of reddish looking and then they grow up they get pretty stiff and they're they're fuzzy underneath it's a neat plant and it's not hard a hard one I think this is the only Syngonium that I have, and it's just the green one. Um, I pulled this out of a variegated one I had, and it just did really well, and I like it. So I don't do very well with Syngoniums in my house for some reason, but this one, those leaves, like that leaf right there is as big as my hand. So it's quite a, striking plant and then right here this is my philodendron lemon lime which didn't grow forever and now it's really started taking off i love the yellow slash like chartreuse colors of that one and you don't hear about that one too often and then next to that this is my uh horse head philodendron i've got a splash gordon 
which is a variegated growing up the one side and then just the regular growing up this side. So I really like that one too. And just over from those is my Hoya Chelsea, oh, which is doing good. She hasn't done anything too exciting and these some of these newer leaves that have come in don't have the dimples on them, which is a little sad because it, she should have the little dimples on her. That's what makes her a Chelsea. Well, but she looks healthy enough, so I don't know. Okay, we're gonna have a little backlight here, but I'll do the best I can. This is my uh, Euphorbia Abyssinica. Let's come over here. This one got knocked over. Can you see that? And all this stuff oozed out. I didn't even wash it off or anything, but I think it's okay, poor thing. It is getting some new growth here. It's euphorbia season here at the south window. So yeah, that one's definitely a beaut. And then next to that, this is the Amic cactus, which is also a euphorbia. This one's a really light green, almost white, if it's by the window. Can you see that? It's really pretty. It's gotten pretty tall. And there's some growth coming in up there. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, and then here's the lovely Euphorbia white ghost. Wowza. That's a majestic plant. Um, I cut off a lot of the you can see the arms at the bottom because I wanted it to be more tree-like. And you can see it's starting to get the little growths, the little leaves on it. I don't have these during the summer because the sun doesn't get as much, or the window doesn't get as much sun because the sun's more to the north. But during the winter, woo! They really come in good. One of my other cacti just got stuck to my arm here. Hang on. Hold on there, little buddy. Um, this one, that once these get a little bit more mature, they turn kind of a pinkish tinge and it's really pretty. Okay, these ones down here, I'm probably gonna have to insert their names because I forget. But this is like, oops, a crested cactus. I can't remember. Yeah, I'll insert the name. These ones get really big and they look like a an ocean wave. They're so pretty. Mine's just a little feller. And then this one, I love this one. Um, this one gets yellow flowers on it. So the green, the purple, and the yellow really look good with each other. And it's just a different one. Um, it reminds me of the book James and the Giant Peach for some reason. Has anyone else read that and does it remind you of it or is it just me? Okay, next to that, this is the, well, it's called Cattails. Um, it's a type of euphorbia as well. Uh, it looks like, I don't know if you can see, but it is starting to get some growth on it, it looks like. But it doesn't matter, I just, look at that. I, it's neat, it's neat looking. The flowers are cute and puffy though. So another day I'll have to show you those. Um, this one right here is my zigzag cactus. That one's really cool. Deadly, it could be deadly potentially. Look how big those spikes are, my goodness. In the flesh, oh yeah. Sorry, I'm tripping over the dog bed here. Um, the variegated flesh is yummy. And it's starting to get, this one gets my favorite, some of my favorite flowers on it. You can see they're starting to come in those little balls on the end. I don't know if you can see it. I really, I'm not seeing it through the camera, but I've also got the sun in my eyeball, so 
Okay, um, this little feller over here, this is called a calico. Oh, hello, you've got a little cobweb action there. Um, this one's a calico heart succulent. It's not got the best color right now because, like I said a million times, the sun hasn't been in the window. It's just starting to come over there. So, But this one gets really, you can kind of see the purple outlining on those. It gets little purple freckles all over it, and it's adorbs. Okay, this one's a totem cactus, and I think it's really neat looking. I don't think it's grown one millimeter since I've got it, but I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, I don't know. So that one's cool, but it really hasn't done anything. And then over here is the Euphorbia Chocolate Drop, which I love this one because the, you can't see because of the backlight, I'm really sorry, but uh, the quills, they're not quills, but you know what I mean. They are a chocolatey color. And then the flesh, let's see if we can get over here so you can see it. It's really kind of tigery looking. I love it. And then right here, um, this is a Peruvian apple cactus. I hope that's right. I don't know, this one's grown, it flowered once when I first got it. And then it's grown this big. I mean, it's grown a lot, but I feel like it should have flowered again by now. And I'm wondering why I'd have to look into it more, but you see how this one's kind of coated in some powdery stuff. And then this one up here doesn't have it, the new part. Hopefully that'll come in as it ages. The flowers on that are something. They, uh, they're really big. They come out at night and they literally last one night. So, I didn't miss them though because there would be blossom, dead blossoms in there and there's not. Okay, right there, that is my black pagoda lipstick plant. I moved that one out of my bedroom because it was so big and my bedroom's so small that we couldn't even get around our bed because I had it at the end of our bed. Yeah, that's a real pretty one. Um, right here, this is a Spathophyllum Platinum Mist, a peace lily. I really like this, the striping on the leaves of this one. It's beautiful. This is a, a pretty new one. There's a new leaf coming in. Gosh, it's pretty, isn't it? I like, I like how full it is. Moving up here above the window. Well, I've got this uh, lipstick plant. It's the pink tie, and it is really doing well. I just got this one a couple months ago, and it's grown a ton. Um, the longest trails were only like that length, but now, I mean, look how much it's grown, and it looks really good. I like the leaves on this one a lot. You can see they kind of sun stressed here. So pretty. And this one gets beautiful pink flowers on it. Okay, and then up above, oh, don't be mad at me, but I'm not gonna pull these all down. These are types of Ripsalis. I'll just insert the names there. There's the first, yeah, just moving along here. Second, third. Um, the one in the little uh, beige pot there is the dead man, dead, hmm, something about bones. <laughs> um, this one's the Capilliformis. I love this one. And you can't see it, oh, but it's really, I like how it hangs down there. Um, the one in the blue pot, that one. And then this one is the uh, Paradoxica. 
Paradoxa or Paradoxica ripsalis. That one's grown a lot. It's getting some new pieces on it. Look how cool that is. All right, coming over here, we've got the Syndapsis pictus exotica. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, these are the leaves it started out with, and these are the ones that have come in. They're way bigger and full of life. Really pretty. Oh, this is my, oh, what's your name? Um, Hestatum. Silver Sword. Um, it's pretty pathetic, <laughs> but it's less pathetic than it was. But I've had it for quite a long time, and I don't know. I don't know. I did notice. See that little right down there? It's got a whole new plant coming in, so that's pretty cool. Um, this is my Cebu Blue. I haven't kept up with watering as well as I should during the summer because there's so much to do. And I think that's why it's got these crusty tips here. But I'll do better. Um, this one's the Philodendron Narrow. I like this one. It's got some cool shaped leaves and I love watching the when it gets new growth on the top, so you just really don't even know what's going on because it's just like a big twisted conglomeration of stuff. So it's fun to watch what comes out of that. And um, this one's my Monstera Leclariana. I know it doesn't look like much, but I've taken a lot of cuttings from it. Um, you can see that's where I cut it to take the first cuttings and it's grown this whole thing. Looks like these are gonna be leaves coming out, but it's a really fast grower and it's pretty. It'll get the fenestrations as it gets older. Um, this is the Philodendron Chordatum Neon and it really doesn't get enough light over here it will, but it doesn't, it hasn't lately. So it's kind of not as pretty as it usually is. This part down here had grown all, it was growing up under our TV right there. And we pulled it out and all the leaves were half seas like this. So we thought that was weird. Maybe we should grow the whole thing under the TV. I don't know, look how pretty these are. And then next to that is the Monstera. Oh, there's some more of those. These ones aren't half seas, but pretty, huh? Um, this is the Monstera Silta Picana. That's a pretty good one. I like the like the leaves on that a lot. Okay, this is our Monstera. Love this plant. It's very beautiful. This is one of the last leaves that came in and it's just starting to get the little holes in it. But then we had this leaf come out and it didn't have a hole in it, which was kind of a bummer because I was thinking it would. Um, we've got another leaf right here that's gonna come out. Hopefully that one will have some more of these little holes in it like the mature leaves get. And then above that is la 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 la. This is my Philodendron Mykins, which I've told you, I think it could be my favorite of all. But it's really pretty. Look at the color on those, those new leaves. Ooh, come on. It's really pretty. Okay, over here by the fireplace, we've got the, I don't know the variety, but it's a snake plant. These are nice when you need to stick a plant in a skinny spot that doesn't get the best conditions, you know, the best light and they're pretty easy. Um, this one I just moved up here 
next to this west window because it doesn't grow. It's the uh, silvery yam. And since I moved it the other day, it got these little dots on it. I had it more in front of the window. So I moved it over because I think it probably got those dots from too much light or not that it was too much light, but it was just way more light than what it was used to getting. So hopefully that one will, you know, decide that it likes, likes it there and grow some more leaves and stuff. Um, oh, here on our fireplace, we've got the Hoya carnosa, which is a lovely plant, and the Syndapsis pictus agriaris. And that one I've wound up into the pot a million times. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's so long. It's really a cute plant. If you don't have the Syndapsis pictus, you you should get it. I think you'll like it. And then we've got another snake plant over there. Okay, coming over here. That is our kind of weird looking um, violin or fiddly fig. It has issues a lot. Um, this is a big issue. It gets these black spots and it's because I haven't well, I think it's because I haven't been watering it, like, consistently. Um, ficus like to be on a consistent schedule. They're a little fussy that way. But it it has grown in, like, all those new leaves. Those are all new. Um, these ones on top are new. So, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's all right. And then up here is the philodendron adansonii the wide form beautiful like so beautiful look at that all right over here is our philodendron gloriosum and she sure is i recently cut off well we'll look and see because i can't remember probably about three of the older leaves though because they just looked really crappy. They got a lot of this on them, browning, but wow, that is, what a plant. That's so beautiful. Let's hop up here and look in the pot. I wanted to get in here with you because at first when I had this plant, I had the, um, the stem like covered, the root ball or the, you know, that little part right above the root ball. I can't think what it's called, but, and I wasn't getting any new leaves, but since I've uncovered it, cause it likes to trail along, hopefully it's hit the edge there. Now it'll come back, you know, and just fill in that pot really well. I love this plant. On this side of the window, we've got of the windows. This is the uh, philodendron Aribescens imperial green, I believe. Imperial green or jade, I don't know, something. I think it's imperial green, but that one's doing great. I have to keep cutting it off because it's overgrowing the pole. All right, so this is my Polia peperomoides. It's gotten pretty big. It's it's pretty, but it's not exactly how it's supposed to be. You can see it has cut leaves and we've got some, I think there's some spots, um, but it's got lots of babies growing in there. It's pretty big. I need a bigger stake in there to hold, hold it up. But yeah, I just turned it because you can see it was reaching for the window and it's pretty sparse on this side, so. And then coming over here on the other side of the windows, I've got another philodendron erubescens, but it's the red one. 
think it's Mm, I don't know. I can't think of the variety name at the moment, but it is the one with the red stems. It's looking good. It gets bumped a lot being at the bottom of the stairs, so it doesn't have many leaves at the bottom like the other one does, but it's growing up really well. Okay, and then coming over here, I've got um, a Monstera Peru on both ends there. And then in the middle, I just gave this guy a big haircut because he, that's a Trandiscantia, the purple, purple heart, I believe. Anyway, he was hanging down like halfway between these maps, but... He was also getting a lot of brown on him, so we just cut him off. And then down here, we've got the uh, Ficus Ali. Um, that one I moved, um, it's been a bit ago during the summer and he's lost a lot of leaves. So, but you can see that he is growing back a bunch of new leaves. So I think he'll be okay. And then down here, we've got a pot of, a big pot. This is like the biggest pot I have. Um, this is a ZZ plant. We've got the regular, the regular ZZ. We've got some of the black ZZ in there. I love the black ZZ, but the dust just really does show up a lot on that. Um, we've got a variegated ZZ in here. And we've also got this little feller over here. This is the Zenzi ZZ, and he's just a little, he stays little. And then lastly, we've got the lovely um, Swedish Ivy, Creeping Charlie, Plectranthus family. This is one of my favorite plants because I just love how full it gets. I love how the branches like swoop down and go out. They are looking for the sun. It's just pretty, really pretty. Sometimes um, I'll be sitting in this chair over here and the sun will shine through these west windows over here and shine right on this and it makes a, well, I can hear it. It goes, ah, ah, more heavenly than that. But yeah, that's a really pretty one. So easy. If you guys don't have one of these, I would highly recommend it. It would look really pretty in a hanging pot too. Okay, and then over here, I've got my Variegated peace lily, the peace lily domino. Um, this one I gotta do better about watering. I gotta do better about watering, period, but this one it really affects. Um, you can see a lot of crisp leaves on the end. It's still really pretty. Um, this, this is a beautiful leaf that it put out, but they're all just kind of different. Like this one's ribbed but then um, there are some leaves that are like so ribbed that they're puckery, like this one. And then it also has um, the lovely flowers. We've got one coming in there. Let me come around here and show you. Um, this is a, the bract in the middle is pretty cool. This is an older, one of the older flowers. They kind of just start to look like a leaf. Here's a newer one that came out. And there's a new leaf about to pop unfurl right there. I just turned this one around so it can get a little more full on this side. And then this little one is a philodendron uh, global green. It's not a philodendron either, it's a pothos. Philodendron Golden Globe or <laughs> Global Green 
pothos. It's a pretty one. Hey guys, well thanks so much for coming along on the plant tour with me. I hope that you are doing good. I hope your plants are doing good. And I will see you next time. Remember to plan on.